I'd like to thank you for that. Um, I agree with you on information is our friend, and we need to embrace getting as much as we can. Um, the reason I cited those information points mm -hmm. is it came from the DWR as they were at a town hall meeting with over 300 people in attendance. And I asked those questions, how much water is coming in and how much water is going out? And when the, the difference was they told us that they needed 110,000, the difference was 80,000. Mm -hmm. 80,000. That's all the environment was entitled to. You see 30,000 coming in without the dam would have been 30,000 going out. The environment was only able to get for itself its natural flow of the headwater coming in. Mm -hmm. We were asking to take more, take more. And that more was water that was stored behind the dam for specific purposes and paid for by those people whose water was left there. In fact, it doesn't go unnoticed under the information that we're having presented here that the central portion of the states- It's really in trouble. It's really in trouble, but if we take a look at that reality, those are the most heavily drained project dams in the state of California. There could have been more water stored there, but it was released. It was released for purposes that were beyond the environment's needs. There was water that could have been left there, but it was dumped. So I'm just pointing that out. Like you said, it's a longer conversation, and I'll yield the floor back to the chairman. I appreciate your comment. Thanks, today. although I, 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 I just don't quite Yeah, know. we'll get to that. I'm happy to I, do that. I think that uh, uh, Director Bonham was going to add some comments. If I might, Mr. Bigelow, just because <clears throat> often the frustration in the regulated community uh, comes to my department as much as it may the water board. Four quick things. I agree with you that in some sense water being released from storage goes beyond the environment because much of that water has been moved to ensure safe drinking water and to repel salt. And that's a public health issue. Second, the thing I'm most interested in is, <clears throat> and it's been the hardest four years uh, I've professionally experienced, and I'm a water lawyer <laughs> by background. Uh, we talk about the early 90s as comparable to this drought. We talk about the late 70s as comparable to this drought. I haven't crunched the numbers, but I'm certain in the 70s and the 90s, the population was a magnitude lower than it is today. And what I'm really worried about is in 20 whatever, when we're 50 million, not 38 million, what we're going to do collectively today to ensure our <coughs> successors uh, can manage it hopefully better. Next thought. <clears throat> I think when you refer to temperature plan guessing your district, you may be talking about how we're managing Shasta Reservoir. The temperature plan requirement uh, in that governance system was produced after an exhaustive evidentiary hearing, and it basically requires the parties each year through the Bureau to try to come up with a management plan for the limited cold water in the reservoir, as you know. Huge props to your constituencies. Um, Sacramento Valley Contractors, Glen Calusa Irrigation District, Reclamation District 108. They were flexible. They took water less. They took it at different times. Frankly, my staff and my department agreed to a higher temperature standard, which is a huge risk after two years of 95% mortality. My point is, we're only going to make it through this if we make it through it together. And I think it's incumbent on my department to encourage that kind of atmosphere where irrigation districts and water users in my department can kind of figure out how we survive through it, get on the backside of it, and then implement as many lessons as we can learn from. And I would just uh, say an echo, a big thank you to you and your flexibility and your understanding of what the local uh, water districts were going through and uh, being as flexible as possible. That's why I asked the simple question. Understood. What, ho anticipating with great hope that this drought is going to be coming to a conclusion sooner than, than later, and, and when it does, I was just simply asking when the drought emergency is over, uh, what powers uh, are intended to be handed back to the sister agencies and what permit and water rights changes are planned on being rescinded. Understood. Because some of those things don't need to continue. We don't need to hold them. Uh, fervently over top of people who were actually good stewards and good players. Mm -hmm. So I was just asking that simple question. I understand. I thank you for asking it. Thanks. 
Thank you. Good discussion. Uh, and now we'll move on to Department of Food and Agriculture. Um, uh, Secretary Ross uh, is unable to be here with us today, so we have uh, 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 Mr. Guna Zakara. Did I get that right? Close. That's great. Yes. Thank you. Well, <laughs> welcome. We're glad to have you here today. Good morning, Chair Bloom uh, and members of the committee. Um, sorry that Secretary Ross can be here. Today's Ag Day uh, on the Capitol steps, and uh, she's very busy with that. Today it's the sort of the big mm -hmm. day for food and ag. So. so she wants to be down there with the big tractors. Is that, is that the <laughs> idea instead of with us? <laughs> Um, to so to she her. sends apologies uh, for not being here. Uh, so I'm science advisor to Secretary Ross um, and oversee the contract uh, that these funds um, um, allow for UC Davis scientists to do this modeling work uh, that helps us communicate widely about uh, the uh, impacts of the drought um, on California agriculture. As you all know, this is the fifth year of the drought although it sure does not seem like that with the El Nino rains that we are experiencing lately. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, with El Nino, we're supposed to get um, better than average uh, rainfall, uh, and what's happening is we're still um, uh, hitting the average rainfall marks. Um, water, as you know, is critical to plant growth and uh, therefore agricultural food production. Uh, the state's ability to move water throughout the state from the north to the south is very unique to California agriculture and California itself, uh, and has allowed California to be the leading agriculture producer in the country in terms of economic value uh, and specialty crop production. With the drought, um, surface water allocations to farmers have been severely reduced. Uh, and, you know, one of the important pieces of information is understanding the agricultural impact to the state in terms of economic value, land fallowed, and job losses, uh, including the, um, you know, where our growers getting their water from, are they moving to groundwater, et cetera, uh, to keep the agricultural systems going. Uh, so CDF has requested 200000 for an economic analysis impact study on agriculture as a result of this ongoing drought. Uh, CDFA does not have the staff and the technical expertise to do this analysis uh, and uh, predict what the impacts of the drought will be for the future growing seasons. Uh, this expertise does lie at the University of California Davis in the, at, at the Center of Watershed Sciences, and they're capable of running certain models to predict the economic impact of the drought. The models are also um, validated uh, and further improved in terms of uh, accuracy um, following the growing season results. Uh, w one of the models that's used by the Davis scientists is called the Statewide Agricultural Production Model. Um, and this model uh, is widely used in the past and well accepted in the scientific realm. Uh, the, uh, the current models uh, cover about 93% of the irrigated production in the state with uh, primary regions in the Central Valley, uh, Southern California, and the Central Coast. What's unique about the UC Davis study is they took this agricultural production model and tied it in with another economic impact model uh, called IMPLAN. Uh, there is also a groundwater scenario analysis included in this, uh, in, in the study, uh, and that was completed uh, with data indicating the extent of the groundwater use and how, uh, because of surface water reductions. The contract includes post-drought validation, as I mentioned, of the drought using satellite imagery and the use of Ag county agriculture commissioner crop reports, which come out after the growing season. The current contract for 200,000 will allow these scientists to continue this work at the Center of, Water, uh, Center of Watershed Sciences at UC Davis and produce a third round of economic impact analysis uh, for 2016 and 17. Uh, new to the contract this year is that um, the data will be widely available and publicly available via a web-based platform. Uh, usually in the past it's been with the final report and then we had to read the final report and extrapolate out the data from that. Uh, I will end by saying according to the U.S. Season uh, Drought Outlook by NOAA and National Weather Service, uh, which, eva which evaluates the drought conditions in the nation, the drought conditions are expected to improve, uh, but the state is expected to continue to be in a drought. 
Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none. Yes. Yes, the end of the, yeah, of course. Well, we're going to move on to the next segment now. Did you want to ask a question about the uh, drought uh, funding? Yeah, I would. Please. Uh, to Ms. Marcus, um, in, in part of your answer, there was uh, uh, talking points, uh, right, and disputing of talking points and sort of uh, expressing, a, a, at least I heard, as, as a pushback to some of the complaints and the criticisms that the people that I represent, the people that Mr. Bigelow represents and others are, are expressing. Um, with that, uh, I, I, I hope you understand that is partly because uh, we think that there is a real discriminatory approach to watersheds. And I would give you the example of uh, the San Joaquin, which was litigated by NRDC for the purpose of replacing salmon, which calls for the highest flows in the coldest water. And up the way is the Tuolumne River uh, with the Hetch Hetchy Dam. And to my knowledge, there is no serious effort to hold that water shed uh, to uh, a fish return standard or the kinds of litigation that has cost so much of the difficulty in uh, the San Joaquin. Can we get an explanation as to why the Tuolumne is exempt from the kind of litigation and the kind of effort to restore fish and the San Joaquin was forced uh, into that settlement? I, I, I may not be the best person to answer it, but the, you just said the San Joaquin is a settlement that was a, agreed to. This is a while ago. And then it, it, some of it enacted in legislation. So folks agreed to do that. But my understanding is a lot of that water hasn't been used because of the drought conditions. But that's kind of its own thing. And then in the, uh, the other TRIBs are, we're working on right now in our water quality control planning. Um, and uh, we're actually very hopeful that people will come to settlements because if you can get agreements, folks can come up with the best measures that work for them with flow maybe being a part of it, um, but also other things that fish need. And so I, I can't uh, describe the difference other that our regulatory program right now is approaching the lower San Joaquin. The upper San Joaquin has that settlement settled Thing. And, and eventually we'll be turning back to that and looking at it in the context of the settlement. But right now, uh, our focus is and has been on that lower San Joaquin River, which is uh, obviously fraught with a lot of different opinions, all of which we'll hear and we keep encouraging people to give us their best ideas on how to deal with it. And you have active groups on all those uh, tributaries meeting right now to see if they can come up with a better way. But that's, that. I can't tell you why that original legislation uh, litigation from I don't know, over 10 years ago was first filed. I should know, but I don't. But it was settled by parties. Yeah, um, settled. So it's kind of apples and oranges in a way. I, I well, guess. I, well, you know, I, I'm going to leave it for another time. But th this is, it is a little bit, uh, uh, I mean, we have two watersheds. One watershed was litigated by NRDC for fish returns and for environmental flow, and we were forced to settle because the question was, if we continue not to settle, maybe the adjudication is going to be worse than the settlement. I'm trying to find out why the Tuolumne River watershed and the San Francisco water supply and the supply that's behind Hetch Hetchy, are you um, holding it to the same kinds of standards that were forced upon the San Joaquin River with respect to fish return, uh, flows, environmental claims, et cetera. That we're in the process of those three TRIBs right now, in our regulatory process on them right now. Honestly, you can look at San Francisco's comments when we first went out and they were not happy, so. Okay. It and would I be helpful for that kind of data to be in my office. Yeah, Thank you. Let's do that, sure. Director Bonham, did yes. you want to add anything? Mr. Patterson, 
Uh, I will have an answer to your question as it relates to my department on my issue two, which is a discussion item on the agenda when I come back up in a minute about our department items. We're actually not going to make you come back up because um, I know you have a deadline and we've checked with the departments. We're going to bump you up to next, okay. but don't, don't okay. start just yet. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, but um, if that uh, uh, concludes the questions um, on this specific issue of drought response funding, we'll see if there's any public comment. Not really public comment. My name is Amanda Martin with Department of Finance. Obviously, all the chairs are taken um, by, oh, by colleagues there. Um, more important, your testimony. I just wanted to echo uh, Director Cohen that we had always intended to come back and make revision on the barriers um, given updated drought conditions in the snowpack survey, and we intended to come back and update our, our drought proposal in recognition as he so stated. Yeah, so I we're should, fine with you leaving it open. Should remind everybody that this is the uh, in some ways a curtain raiser. Um, we'll be back in uh, uh, May again or after May. Uh, Revise comes out and uh, right. uh, be looking at these issues again. Please. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the subcommittee. I'm Wendy Ritterbush with the Association of California Water Agencies, or ACWA. We represent 430 agencies that deliver about 90% of the developed water within California. We're really proud and feel very privileged to be in partnership with uh, the Department of Water Resources and Director Cowan. Uh, managing the popular Save Our Water program. Um, it was a real game changer in 2015. Um, it educated the public about the need to continue water conservation efforts that are very important. It provided on the ground tools to conserve uh, both inside and outside homes and businesses in California. You talked about you know sort of quantifying efforts. We had 1.6 million website hits. Uh, we sent out a targeted mailer, mailer to 2.8 million homes in California with conservation tips. And we really can't underscore the value of this um, campaign to support the proposed $5 million. Um, it's, it's money well spent, and we hope to continue the efforts with the department on that. And moving on to second item, we'd also like to express support for the proposed $10 million in SRA funding um, to CAL FIRE for grants to assist dead tree removal. Um, I think it's uh, issue seven on page 35. Um, it would be to uh, assist dead tree removal. We're part of a coalition called COFWA with some interesting bedfellows. It's Farm Bureau, Nature Conservancy, RCRC. And uh, we call it the, uh, we call it COFWA. It's the California Forest and Watershed Alliance. As part of the coalition, we really do care about uh, preventing and reducing high severity wildfires. We support increasing both the pace and scale of landscape restoration efforts, um, which we think is going to improve the quantity and quality of, of water uh, emanating from the watersheds or headwaters in California. So we've really enjoyed our collaboration with Director Pimlon on that, and we hope to continue efforts on that this year as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, please step forward if you have comments and be prepared to step right up to the mic. Juan Damirano, Associate Director with uh, Public Policy with Audubon, California. Uh, we want to uh, also support uh, the previous comments, uh, previous individuals' comments on uh, regarding CAL FIRE, uh, including also uh, DWR for the hydro data set improvement of uh, stream gauges, um, DFW, uh, issues uh, with uh, the SAC and San Joaquin River tributaries, and the Delta Stewardship Council uh, in, in the planning update of the Delta plan. So thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion uh, on this? Uh, I'd like to make item? a motion to hold open uh, the $42 million for the department's uh, installation and removal of temporary rock barriers. Um, uh, but approve the remainder of the proposals as budgeted and adopt the supplemental reporting language requiring the administration to submit the two formal reports. I'll second that. Can, could you restate that one? I'm sorry. Mr. Sure. It, it's, it's the staff recommendation, which should be in your report, and um, it's holding open the rock barrier uh, funds approving the rest as budgeted and the submit uh, requiring the administ administration to submit the two formal reports. You'll find that on page 16. Would you be a, a reminder of maybe an addition holding off the 5.4 million? 
four million requests under the state water regional board. So we can uh, better understand that. I, I do not see the reason to do that at this point in time. Have a separate vote on that, Mr. Chair? Yes, sure. I'll rephrase the uh, motion to um, be, with the exception of um, the uh, um, the DWR two pieces of funding and the water uh, uh, water board uh, piece of funding, all else as budgeted. All right. We have a motion and a second. We'll move forward with the vote. Bloom? Aye. Gordon? Williams? Aye. Patterson? Bigelow? Aye. And we'll have a separate motion on the uh, 5.4 million? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll move the um, 5.4 uh, million uh, for uh, continued enforcement of drought related water rights and water curtailment since we already approved the 16 million in the last motion. I'll second that. Let's vote. Bloom? Aye. Gordon? Williams? Aye. Patterson? No. Bigelow? No. We'll hold that open uh, to complete the vote. Thank you all very much for your participation this morning. Mr. Bonham, we are going to move to issues, uh, uh, the issues under uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife. And uh, we're running uh, pretty significantly behind schedule here. We've got a lot of uh, matters to cover before we adjourn um, uh, at noon. I apologize for being a little bit late getting started this morning, but uh, we're going to try and move as expeditiously as possible through the agenda. Yes, I'll go to the bottom line. <laughs> The first issue for the department chair and members is a proposal in the governor's budget to provide 1.7, well, $1,778,000 from the general fund to the department's law enforcement division to implement a recently passed uh, piece of legislation, Assembly Bill 96. Assembly Bill 96. Um, <clears throat> makes it illegal to purchase, to sell, to offer to sell, to import with intent to sell ivory, uh, primarily in the state of California. This bill, which is now law in the Fish and Game Code, corrects uh, ambiguity that existed in the Penal Code from many decades ago and takes the authority for implementation out of the Penal Code and puts it in the California Fish and Game Code. So what we will do with this funding is we will create a special team. It will include one forensic specialist. This is highly technical work. Four wardens, one supervising lieutenant, one attorney, because these are complicated cases involving trade and other legal matters, and a support staff for a team of eight. These are not new positions. We will redirect, um, and it's a request for funding. California and its shipping ports are some of the biggest focal points internationally for the illegal trade of ivory, which has become in recent years a tool implemented in the global sphere of terrorism and has become an increased priority for the United States government to crack down on. This bill directs our department to take an even greater role managing this problem in the state of California. Thank you. Do we have any uh, questions about this report? We'll take public comment.
Good morning, Chairman Bloom, members of the committee, Director Bono. My name is Jennifer Fearing, and I'm pleased to be here in support of this budget proposal on behalf of the Humane Society of the United States, the San Francisco SPCA, Defenders of Wildlife, the Performing Animal Welfare Sanctuary, the Courage Campaign, and the Wildlife Conservation Society, all organizations which were part of a large coalition of conservation, animal protection, and human relief organizations that were strongly supportive of Speaker Emeritus Atkins' bill last year. We want to thank the department for bringing, and the, and the governor for including this proposal. It's consistent with the cost. They pointed this out throughout the process, legislative process last year. We, we never resisted or uh, believe that there was any anything other than what, this is anything other than what should happen. Um, and the department is known to be understaffed for law enforcement as a general rule, and we're glad to see this as a new emerge as a law enforcement priority. We, we urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Victoria Rome with the Natural Resources Defense Council. Uh, we commissioned a report in late 2014, which found that much of the ivory being sold in California was still illegal under the previous statute, and that's why we also supported AB 96 to close that loophole and make sure that it was clear that all ivory uh, was illegal to be sold here, and we also support this funding request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a motion on these items? So moved. Uh, all second. Let's move to a vote. Bloom. Aye. Gordon. Williams. Aye. Patterson. Aye. Bigelow. Aye. Items open. Thank you. Thank you, Director Bonham. You are ready to go. <laughs> well, second issue. Oh, that's right. You have second issue. This morning, Which I hope right. to get to Mr. Patterson's question I to Ms. Marcus. So I'm this, trying to help you out of here a little bit, <laughs> doing, doing my job a little that, bit too well. Yeah, I should have taken that invitation. Uh, this component of the governor's proposed budget for our department relates to uh, the tributaries to the San Joaquin main stem and to the Sacramento Valley. Mr. Patterson, there are a variety of dialogues underway in both these landscapes. <clears throat> there are existing processes where parties are sitting with each other trying to sort out an equity-driven approach to flow and non-flow measures. So, Director Bonham, um, please don't take this as a criticism, but I think in it's the better if you address your comments to the entire Fair enough. Uh, 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 assembled uh, committee um, rather than, um, and, and I think it's good policy for us to, yes. to do that rather yes. than engage in colloquy between, between members.